Will the markets continue to weaken from here? We're going to talk about it in this video. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. And what kind of cup does a turkey drink out of? It's a goblet. We had Jerome Powell's speech yesterday. We know the markets rallied off of it. We want to know, will that rally continue from where we're at right now? What could it mean for the future direction of the market throughout the month of November, possibly into December? So I have that commentary for you. I'll also tell you where you can see how I'm playing this market. I'll tell you how to get access to my options course that I'm building. And I'll also tell you about the free stocks from Moomoo. In the meantime, I do want to get into the charts. We'll look at the SPY. We're going to look at the Qs. And we're also going to bring up the U.S. 10-year yields. And then we'll also bring up the U.S. US dollar index as well, because I think there's a lot to unpack there, a lot to really see, some technicals that we absolutely should be paying attention to, as I've mentioned in my previous videos. So without further ado, here's the chart, here's SPY as we look at it. So in a previous video on the SPY, as I talked about, it, I said that down here at this longer term trend that we have, should we come off of that, we would, that we would rally very sharply off of that. You can see that support at the bottom of the bearish channel held so far that off of that 410 level, which I also said could be very strong support for us, we have ripped up off of that significantly. If we actually put a price tool on here, we can actually see where we went from close to close on that one. And that's about a 3% rally that we got so far with further room to the upside that we can possibly put on from the bottom of this another percent and a half up to the top of the channel. Now, mind you, we do have some things in the way of that. Apple earnings are one thing that we absolutely want to pay attention to. Although I will say that what we've seen for the previous tech earnings was under this sell-off that we had with higher bond yields, and also with a stronger U.S. dollar. That has changed since Jerome Powell has spoken, and I'll get to those in just a moment. But we do have further room to the upside for SPY. It is possible that today's very green. We'll get the jobs report coming out for that, the initial jobless claims, I should say. And then tomorrow, I believe that we also get more employment data coming out as well that we want to be watching out for non-farm payrolls. So there is economic data that can get in the way of this. And I, it can also be something that can help support it. So we, we absolutely, all those things that we wanted to watch before, we wanted good economic data. And as long as that economic data is either neutral or good for us, either way, that is something that could keep on pushing us up in the market. And that could be really be something that could finally fix this correction that we see right now, at least in the near term. So for SPY, we do have room to the upside. That upside would take us to about that 430 level, possibly even allow us to break the top of this bearish channel, which would be a very bullish sign for us. And that would take us up to about that 436, 437. And that is something that's reasonable that we see. That's only about a 2% move, a little over a 2% move. That would be some very green days after all the green that we've seen, even though it'd be unlikely to get that high. I think we're going to find that resistance for Friday. I think we're going to have people cashing in on some gains for that. So be aware of that, especially as we get into that last hour or two on Friday that people start cashing in on some profits from this low that we had. So I do think that we have some more bullishness ahead of us. I'm getting to the evidence here. Let's take a look, quick look at the cues. But on the spot, by the way, we are back up above the 200 day. Yesterday, we closed back up above the 200 day. Let me backtrack just for a moment and show that. So let me take away a lot of these indicators, which by the way, we have a lot of sign from our indicators, momentum indicator, almost crossing back up over 50. The 5 EMA and the 3 EMA, EMA on the daily chart also crossing each other. Another full another bullish sign for us. So this yellow line, this wiggly yellow one that you see coming up through here, we closed above that bullish. To close above that, that is absolutely incredible to see that that could lead to further upside as well. So that's the evidence from the spy. Let's get over to the cues. So on the cues down here, we have the RSI almost touching that 50 line. As a matter of fact, as of yesterday, 49.17. Today, we will most likely cross that as long as the bullishness from the pre-market holds out. And I believe that it can. We are down below the 50 day slightly bearish sign, but we stayed above the 200 day, which is a bullish sign for us. So still mix, we peekabooed out of this little channel E area that we were on, not quite parallel for those lines, but still pretty darn good as we look at it. And again, we have room on this at least up back up to 360 and possibly we come up to the 50 day at that 364. It'd be really, really awesome to see us cross back up above the 50 to the top of this channel at 370. So I think that we have a lot of green ahead of us over the next several days, at least leading up to the inflation reports that we see, assuming that geopolitically things don't really change too much for us, assuming that bond yields don't change too much. The strength of the U.S. dollar doesn't change too much to the upside for those things. And then inflation, of course, there's going to be a lot of pressure for that. We could definitely see some red surrounding like CPI and PPI reports coming out. That inflation reports, jobs reports, those can still be highly impactful to the market. So we want to watch out for it. 
But the evidence that I've been talking about here, let's put up the EMAs for this and what we can see, especially as I zoom in here, we don't have today, we don't have this green five period EMA crossing the yellow 13 period EMA, but man, it's getting close. Today could be that day that we see that cross happen, which is a bullish sign for us. And especially as we close up above that red line right there, which is the 50 EMA that we have that can also indicate to us that we have some more bullishness, some more upward direction to go. And you can see that back here where we have that previous cross and getting up above those moving averages that we have here, the 50 SMA and the red, the 50 EMA is also good for us. You can see we hit the top of the channel and then back down from there. So with that said, we also want to take a look at the bond yield because that is also going to be something incredible for us. So something specific, by the way, on the hourly chart that I want to show you with those bond yields is very much worth paying attention to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to US10Y for the yields on the 10 year treasury. So looking at these bond prices that we have on the daily chart, you can actually see a significant amount of information and what we had throughout this period above 4.8. And that was a critical number that I mentioned before in my other videos, talked about it over in my Discord, 4.8 that we needed to break that line to see the markets rally. Look at this candle coming out from Wednesday, from yesterday, we are below that 4.8 line and now we're flirting with that 4.7. That is incredible for us. Let's break down to the hourly because that gives us further illumination on what exactly is going on. So this is the 4.8 line right here in about the middle of your screen. And where did we solidly break that? We broke that at 1400 hours military time yesterday. That's 2 p.m. yesterday. That goes along with the fact that we paused on the federal funds rate. And then by the time we get to the next hour, by the time we get to the 3 p.m. hour, we start to drop. Jerome Powell is speaking between 2.30 and 3, at 2.30, by the way, speaking across that 3 o'clock hour, and the, and the bond yield just continues to drop. And we tagged that 4.7. We tagged 4.8 4 was critical, 4.7. So the next big line for us is that 4.7. It is possible that we double bottom here, go back up and retest 4.8. We're going to have to watch that. But if I zoom out so that we get more context to this, look at the path that we've been on. And I've shown before that as these yields rise, we're going to get a drop in the markets. And if we go back out to the daily chart, we can actually show a little bit better where we sort of bottomed out and then where we start to rise on that. So this is going all the way back into 2022. And you can see the rising bond yields that we've had throughout that time and then getting this local peak here in October. And as that started to settle, the market started to rally and the market peaked up a little bit in January. The market started to rally, still dropping, dropping. The market continuing to climb throughout that time as we were below that 4%, but we were still up above 3% that we were sort of sandwiched in there. And then when did the market start to turn around? The market really started turning around for us as we came back to this peak that is around July 11th. We sort of bottomed right on July 18th or 19th. And then the bond yields started to rip up from there. And as those yields moved up, the market started to move down. The market started selling off at the end of July, throughout August, September, throughout October. And now that we're getting into November, now we're starting to see some peakiness finally come into this. And that peakiness finally starting to break on us. So what that could mean for us, and this is important, what that could mean for us is that the market could possibly be finding a local bottom where we're at right now, that as these bond yields continue to fall, that that could be further confirmation that we're going to continue that move up for a while until we start to see a re-steepening of those bond yields. So we absolutely want to watch that. So as they start to peak out some more, as if we come back towards that 5%, expect for the markets to sell off. If we come back and retest 4.8, fail to break it, and then drop back down to that 4.7 line, it is possible that we keep on falling through that. So that's the 10 year yield that we're looking at. And as that continues to fall, the market could continue to pick up strength. So we could watch that for right now because we don't want to see that debt become something that's crushing. So let's move on from there to DXY. And this is the US dollar index as we look at it. And what you're looking at right now is the hourly chart for DXY. And the thing to pay attention to as we look at it right now, this candle, this candle that we have from yesterday at 2 p.m., that's when we got the Fed announcement that there was no further rate hike. And then Jerome Powell came out to speak at 2.30. And you can see that drop. We broke down below this red EMA 50 that we have right here. And then it really just kept on dropping from there all the way up until I record this video that we have a further decline all the way down to 106. So we were just at 107. We're down to 106. 
as of today. And if I zoom out for further context, you can see that we have almost a cliff to fall off from there. And so it is possible that we get a further market rally off of that. So let's go out to the daily chart as we look at it. So as we look at the daily chart, we have room down to 105. If we move down to 105, we're going to sit at about support on the EMAs that we have here, the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA that's coming down. It is possible we keep losing strength. If as we look at the RSI here, crossing down below 50 will also be a good sign for us that this thing is losing momentum, that it is going to keep on selling off for us. And again, this is tracking the strength of the US dollar. Strong dollar can be something bad for markets. Weak dollar can be something that's very good for markets. So we absolutely want to pay attention to that and the bond yields, because as I said, they can both be good indicators for us. So last couple things here to share with you. First of all, if you want to see how I'm playing these markets, see what I'm buying and selling, you can do that through the Patreon. That link is down in the description. My community that I have over there, top-notch, wonderful people, passionate about finance. Come on over and join us. We'd absolutely love to have you over there. I have an options course that I'm building. I have the next video nearly ready to go. I'll be putting that up very soon. Four different perspectives for talking about why you would bother buying call options in the first place. And this course is designed to take you from complete beginner all the way through the advanced trading strategies that we have for options. And then 16 free stocks from Moomoo, which is where I buy and sell those options. And down here, the deposit levels, each stock valued up to $2,000 a piece. And you get a free share of SoFi at each deposit level, five free stocks for $100 deposit, 15 free stocks for $1,000 deposit. So go ahead and take advantage of that offer while it lasts. So just to wrap things up here, Economic reports aside, we have all the technical indicators so far that would point to the fact that we could continue this rally for a little while longer, that it's not quite done yet. So that's what we're looking at for this near term. We do have to still pay attention to inflation. We still have to pay attention to job reports. They can still definitely be things that move us. Watch that strength of US dollar. Watch the 10-year yield as we look at it, because both of those things, if they creep back up on us, can send us back down. So that's what I have. That's what I'm thinking. I think the markets can still move up from here. Check out the link for the Patreon. Join us over at the community. Talk to us throughout the trading day. See what I'm buying and selling. And then also, don't forget about your free stocks from Moomoo. Take advantage of that offer while it does last. Thank you guys for watching this video. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning. And we'll see you in the next video.